hello. We are currently during the season of Epiphany. And usually during this liturgical time, the passage from the New Testament is essentially the stories of the call of some of Jesus' disciples. And this week, it's a Luke version of what has been known as uh, Peter's call. More specifically, it's the fifth chapter, verses 1 to 11. And probably you know a little thing, a few things about it. You know, Jesus, just to, you know, in a nutshell, Jesus is wants to speak to the crowd. He's by the seashore. You see a boat. Said, ask the guy who owned the boat, can I come inside the boat so and you can go on the water so I can talk to the crowd? It's gonna be good. Said, okay, yeah, whatever. And then when he's done, he look at the guy who happened to be Peter. He said, well, you know what? Cast your net because you're gonna catch some good fish. And Peter, you know, that's the part that really caught me. Is says, you know what? We've been fishing all night long, and we caught nothing. And I always thought that it was a very polite way to answer, <laughs> because if I would be the one receiving this request, it probably would be, "Who are you again?" Because I'm a fisherman. That's my job. That's my trade. I know what I'm doing here. And I tell you, there, there's no fish. And who are you? Oh, a son of a carpenter. Yeah, sure. You're going to tell me what to do. <laughs> that would be um, a very, I would say, often we see that kind of reaction because it feels counterintuitive to follow the advice of someone who is not a professional or has no credibility in some way. And even after that, you know, the part when Jesus said, you know, come with me and now you will um, catch uh, people, men and women, instead of fish. Once again, let's put herself in Peter's shoes, said, oh, we're gonna start something that will change the world. Okay, you have money, a good network, some sort of fame or notoriety or something like that. And Jesus would say, nope. And furthermore, I ask you to leave everything behind to follow me. Yeah, thanks, but no thanks. Once again, how does it make sense? How's it gonna work? You know, once again, very counterintuitive, going against what we have been told, what experience teach us. And this counterintuitive message stays during Jesus' ministry and also in Christianity today. Because what we say, you want a good and meaningful life? You know what? Your, your money, your goods, your resources, don't hurt, hoard them, share them, and expect nothing in return. You know, the, those who hurt you, belittle you, say nasty things against you, you know, you know them, yeah, yeah. Forgive them. Don't, don't, don't work for revenge or get even, no, no, no. Forgive them. Uh, when you pray, no, no, don't, don't pray for your family. Don't pray for your friend. Pray for those you hate. Pray for your enemy. In this world that we say, you know, like savage and, and dogs eat dog and the survival of the fittest, when we say to be gentle is a weakness, is a liability, no, I tell you, blessed are the meek. Does not make sense. No, no wonder there's so many people out there telling, you know, said, you know, your, your faith, your, your beliefs, Christianity, Jesus world, it's all beautiful in theory. Yes, wonderful. In the real life, no way. 
does not connect, does not make sense in their real life. Well, I'm the one who believes that the real life, our society, is what we build together, what we make of it. And sometimes we accept to be convinced by others that something is not possible, that something does not make sense, that something's not going to work. And yet, for some of us, it is working. Jesus' message makes sense for 2000, more than 2,000 years. And maybe because we discovered, or at least we try, to discover that there's value in being nice. There's something to learn in generosity. There's something that opens us to when we let go of our old grudges. When we listen to different voices, unexpected voices, voices from the margin, we can discover something about ourselves, about our world. It can lead us, even if those voices are saying things that we might believe that is counterintuitive. And that's what I hope this season, this coming weeks, months, days, hours, I don't know, that maybe you might be interested to say, oh, yeah, that, that thing does not make sense, but you know what, I'm, maybe I will investigate it a little more. Maybe I will listen to it. Maybe even if I believe that it will never work, maybe I will give it a try and see what happens. Does not mean that it's always going to work. It's always going to be easy. But sometimes when we open ourselves, there's always something we can learn. There's always a way we can be transformed. And that's the challenge Jesus offers us with this counterintuitive message. Once again, thank you very much for listening. I'm a day you know, later than I did, as I'm recording this a day later, because yesterday was the Lunar New Year. So those who have been celebrating this, Happy New Year once again. Here it was busy, of course. And I wish you taking care of yourself. Until next time, I remain the lectionary man, Reverend Stéphane Vermette, and take care of yourself, and bye-bye.